Hey guys, <clears throat> as you know, I have a lot of ties to Russia, a lot of friends and loved ones over there. I've tried to record a video on the situation um, going on uh, in Ukraine multiple times now, but I find it really difficult. It's such a complex issue with so many consequences that uh, I find hard to keep anything I have to say limited in scope <laughs> because it just touches so many aspects of my life, my friends' lives, the world, etc. Um, so many, it spells of, speaks of so many missed opportunities to build um, cooperative, mutually beneficial relationships with uh, amongst all these countries. It, it, uh, there's just so much to say, but I'm going to try to keep it limited in the scope to one particular point. Um, I was shocked over the years. I would have never imagined 10 years ago, 20, 10 years ago, Russia and Ukraine going to war. They're as culturally and historically um, close as two nations can be in some ways. They share familial ties and uh, religion and culture and all that. And uh, to watch them over the last 10 years, to watch that rift grow, to watch civil war break out, to watch now a full-on hot war happen is just unimaginable um and i can't but help but think like how did that happen and and you know i know a lot of russian people i know a lot of russian people who have kids who uh are sent on the are on the front right now because uh you know every every family i lived with in russia had uh whether they be reindeer herders or out in the siberian villages or whatever it's a conscript army, so all those kids, when they turn 18, they get sent to the military, and then they get sent to Ukraine now, and it's like all of a sudden, you know, we see this on the news, you know, you see the Russian tanks charging in, and uh, the, you know, big intimidating Russia, I kind of see like, oh my gosh, these are 18 year olds that are in way over their heads, uh, in an old fashioned uh, meat grinder type army, uh, heading into another country and the, oh my gosh this is insane I um as much as I want I definitely want Ukraine to resist the outside domination uh and I also don't want a lot of people to die on either side oh it's it's terrible it's tragic and I hope it ends how did but but I know the people that are the uh you know the I know the Russians involved in this and I actually know they're good people so how did good people end up here what happened and then I think uh you know when you watch you know I've watched over the in the news in Russia I've watched this over the years as as relations have degraded between the two countries and you see uh you know in Russia they're constantly pointing out to the pointing to the ukrainians ukrainians saying look at these nazis these fascists like look what they're doing over there and uh oversimplifying and and um labeling and characterizing all these people and uh i kind of see how over time that just developed a larger and larger chasm between the two peoples what is interesting here for us and where we should be introspective is that we're no better oh now we don't have a government enforced um information silo that we're all in as they do in russia but we all have algorithmically algorithmically induced information silos and we all can see that um we have friends and loved ones and people maybe we used to know that now we just can't even like how are they how do they have those views and how could they support that person and and uh all of a sudden we start putting labels on them oh those fascists those nazis those are the same labels the ukrainians have gotten from the russians and, and um as we oversimplify and caricaturize um people uh we start to drift apart and if we don't arrest that at some point the chasm between us and people with whom we share way more in common than we have dividing us will grow um, to a point where we can no longer um, cross that chasm. So.
if you recognize that chasm um, between you and another person, uh, especially a person that you actually should have more in common with than than not, like say a family member or a friend or a countryman, whatever it be. But if you recognize that chasm developing uh, between you in some kind of an interaction, you might need to stop and, and be like, wait a second, am I in an information silo? Am I, am I viewing things too simplistically? Am I not seeing this person's perspective and not seeing them holistically as a person, but rather seeing them as a character caricature that's been formed? Um, we all need to do the work to prevent ourselves from allowing that rift to continue to grow. And sadly, I saw it happen between Russia and Ukraine, countries that are so close. And I can see the seeds of it in our own society. And I hope we can all work in our own lives, in our own relationships, in our own perspectives to stop that rift from growing. Um, if it really can lead to terrible places. Uh, I think we all know and we're all aware that there's a bit of that seed in us here. And uh, let's stop it before it grows. Let's try to view one another as individuals with <laughs> who are generally all trying to work for the good. We may disagree with one another, but let's try to understand one another, give each other the benefit of a doubt, uh, and hopefully we can avoid just destructive consequences. Um, we all know people that, uh, always focus on the negative and we have, we all have loved ones like that. And, and I never wish that for, for my loved ones. I, you know, we, we need to focus more often on what we're grateful for and what we have in the same way we need to focus more often on what unites us with with other people and what unites um us across um all tribal <laughs> or divisional lines um so i hope we can resist those uh divisions in our own society and families and lives and work to do that it takes work because we are literally all in <laughs> echo chambers and silos of some sort that we need to push back against um and whatever much love to you all thanks for watching uh i hope this all ends quickly and with as much as little uh loss of life as possible uh god bless you all